All right, and ha Haley, thank you. All right, we'll wait a couple more minutes. Hopefully, Titus joins us. I'm gonna check and make sure he's not having trouble. Um, looks like more people are still joining, so that's great. I'll just welcome everybody as they start to come in. Um, my name is Jen Connor Godby, and I am a licensed clinical social worker, and I'm really excited to talk to you about these changes. Um, today. So, yeah. All right, we'll wait one more minute. It's nice to see everyone arriving. Happy lobby day. There's Kay. Um. All right. Okay, maybe you can reach out to Titus. I don't see him yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and start. Um, okay. And then hopefully he'll join. So um, welcome everybody. Hopefully you've been um, enjoying your participation in learning a lot and in lobby day so far today. Um, I am so excited to be presenting on this topic. It is one that um, I've been involved with, well, in some way or another for a long time, right? Um, since I've been a social worker now for more than 20 years. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started. Please put your chat, um, put your questions in the chat. Um, if you, and we'll try to pay attention to those as we go. Um, if you have questions at the end too, I'll take them. So either way is fine with us. Um, okay. Hopefully everyone's in the right place and ready to talk or listen and both about clinical supervision changes in Kentucky. I see Titus. Oh, great. I wanted to let him introduce himself um, to, so Titus, if you want to turn your video on and say hi, so we can be our co-presenters. While he's doing that, I didn't tell you very much about myself, except that I'm a social worker. So I am an LCSW. I'm currently in the my eighth year at working at UK in the Department of Psychiatry and my probably 13th year of being with Kentucky Society for Clinical Social Work. And currently I'm serving in the role of past president and um, board member. And so we have been tracking the clinical supervision changes over the past three or four years as a society. And we currently have a committee working on um, providing the training that will be required. Um, okay, so Titus, when you get on, I'll let you say something. Um, excuse me, just a moment. Um, nope, okay. Um, so, brief history. 1975, the Kentucky Board of Social Work was initially established. So that was when a group from the Clinical Society um, worked to try to get parity with other professions. So they wanted to be able to charge, um, you know, and 
just like psychologists for their services and get billed insurance. So that was the first way we started developing these regulations around what clinical supervision would mean. And then, um, luckily for us, they set the stage and made the standards pretty high um, so that we would eventually now be kind of the standard for the United States. For example, the VA looks to Kentucky for clinical supervision guidelines. Um, that's how it got started. And then um, we added a couple of definitions in terms of what that educational process means. So it's basically a partnership, right? I just wanted to ground you in that idea of this is what supervision means. Um, excuse me, just a second. Sorry about that. I hope you guys are all working at home too and understand how this goes. Okay, so Titus said, can you all see me? We can't see you, Titus. So hopefully you can get your video and audio on soon. Um, I can see I can see him, Jen. Okay. But I can't. Okay. So I just had it on the view of look who's talking. So Titus, when you, uh, let's see. There you go. I can see you now. Do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself before I go on? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, my name is Titus. I am a MSW student at UK. I'm in my last semester. Um, I'm doing my year long internship at um, Kentucky Society for Clinical Social Work. Uh, Jen Godby is my supervisor. And um, yeah, it's just been a great experience. So I'm glad everybody's here. Awesome. And I'm so excited to do this together with you because we have that kind of partnership that we're gonna be talking about today. So we hope to be able to draw on that work that we're doing together in this presentation. Um, so moving through the history, cause we got some lot of other things to talk about. And like I said, this is very brief. But the um, standards that we discussed were revised in the 90s to include more training for supervisors and more detailed contracts, the contracts that you, you've maybe been introduced to, to that we have now today. Um, we did also include the NASW and the ASWB have best practice standards in social work supervision. I have those um, links at the end of this presentation for you to be able to review. So the impetus for this presentation today is that the current board has been gathering data. They did a survey several years ago. They've been working for the last several years to revise our current clinical supervision standards to be more in line with other states, I'm, I'm to muted. address some of the concerns that um, have been brought up by social workers in our state as well. Um, I know that Titus has participated as well as I have, and many of you, I hope, have participated in the Kentucky Board of Social Work meetings. Um, about a year ago, when we were faced with this pandemic, they started putting those meetings online, which have actually made them more accessible to all of us. So I highly encourage that on the second Tuesday of any month, you can go at 1130 to the Board of Social Work website and click on that meeting link and attend. So, okay, I just got a message. Are you guys not seeing the PowerPoint? Because I'm looking at it, but maybe you're not. So let me check. Okay, thank you so much. Now, can you see it? Yes, okay, the no's are turning to yeses. Good, <laughs> awesome, okay. Sorry about that, guys. I must have stopped it in my interruption dealing with. OK, so now we're going to talk about those current standards. Yes, Amy, technology is fun. So sometimes really fun, like allowing us to go to the board meetings and sometimes like maddening, right? Um, 
Okay, so here's a summary of those current standards. Um, currently, the big number that has been most discussed in the change is the 200 hours. So currently, 100 of those must be individual, 100 can be group. Um, and you must complete those before you can take the LCSW exam. You have to have a supervisor of record, but you can have additional supervisors like those might be your group supervisors. Um, I'm not gonna read to you the big paragraph there in the middle, but I want you to take away from that that that's where you find the information about what, how much time do I have to work and what counts. Um, when Titus and I were preparing for this, he had those questions too. So I'm gonna let you, Titus, kind of talk about a little bit about how that answers those questions and what the current standards are in terms of um, what do you have to do to uh, get your license currently? Oh, someone else is. Okay, do you wanna go with that, Titus? Can you unmute? I was just gonna let you summarize that. There you go. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, in order to get your um, LCSW, you have to have at least two full years of clinical supervision, um, at least 30 hours per week, um, or three years of a part-time consisting of at least 20 hours per week. Um, sometimes it might take people a little bit over the two years, but it has to be at least two years for you to uh, be able to take your licensing exam. Um, but I think that's really the gist. Yeah, some people do have questions of like what counts for those hours per week. So that's why I included those um, five things, the qualifying experience, right? So for example, case management doesn't count or um, just talking to clients or spending time with them, driving, for example. It has to be related specifically to the accurate diagnosis of the problem. It can be documentation of those things, but has to be related to developing a treatment plan, the skills that you're using in the therapeutic process, the ethical issues that come up, and just and your developmental use of professional self. So anything related to diagnosis, assessment, treatment or termination and the ethics and the issues around improving your own skills is qualifying experience. Um, however, sometimes that is confusing. So taking questions in the chat, if anybody has questions about these current standards or um, what is qualifying experience, because that part will not be changing the qualifying experience. Okay, everyone's crystal clear on that. Awesome, Titus, good job. All right, we'll move on to the next slide. So I wanted to be clear uh, um, about what is social work and what isn't before we talk about, uh, let's see, the changes, okay. So Taylor, yes, the hours will be changing. We will be getting to that. How do you document to make that clear? Um, Casey, maybe let me know a little bit more about your question and I'll come back to it. Um, what qualifies as versus clinical and what doesn't, right. So you document that um, in terms of your contract, first of all, your job description, um, and then also your notes, your clinical notes and documentation on what you do with patients. Hopefully that answers that question. Uh, you will be able to get a copy of the PowerPoint and, um, okay, so types and roles and positions MSW hold when gathering their hours. So after you get your MSW, of course, you will want to take the initial exam and get your CSW. 
and then you will be able to um, yeah, seek positions, usually under supervision, you can hold the same kind of positions that LCSW holds. So you can be a clinician in uh, lots of entry level places um, where you would be able to do assessment, diagnosis, treatment. Um, and yeah, certainly other social workers can chime in and put in the chat examples of more specific roles and positions for Caitlin, because that's a really good question. Um, okay, and do you submit when, yes, you submit your hours when you're applying for the LCSW. Your supervisor does need to be an LCSW. So in the state of Kentucky, psychologists, psychiatrists, other professionals, while they may be licensed and credentialed, do not count for your um, clinical supervision hours. Good. Okay, we'll come back to the chat for more questions. I want to talk a little bit about this slide. The practice of social work is these things. So this gives you more um, specific points on what competencies and skills you need to be a licensed clinical social worker. So you need to be able to um, facilitate individual, couples, family, and group psychotherapies. You need to be able to know what are the recognized treatment modalities, the evidence-based treatment modalities for the patients that you're treating in your job. And you need to know how to establish a therapeutic relationship, assessment and diagnosis, treatment planning, how do you evaluate progress and know when you should be finished? That's a really important um, skill as well. Sometimes we put a lot of emphasis on starting, but not as much on finishing. And this is a face-to-face -face, um, contact. So when we talked about qualifying experience, that does need to be face-to-face -face with the contact, client contact part. And it can include telehealth based on recent um, amendments to the KRS. Okay. Titus, anything else you wanted to say about this slide? Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I was looking at uh, one of these chat questions by Casey in the chat box. Okay. So do you submit a job question. description, clinical notes, roles and responsibilities to confirm your clinical hours? So yeah, we will get to that, Casey. But yes, you submit a job description. You don't usually submit your clinical notes, but you do do a contract that outlines your roles and responsibilities. Yes. Uh, Amy also asked the question about counselors or other therapists, like they're licensed clinical counselors and there's uh, marriage and family therapists. Um, those people can be invaluable for consult consultation and they have lots of knowledge and experience to share and can be great colleagues, but they cannot be your clinical supervisor. So, okay. And yes, so you have to have a jo assigned job description that shows you're performing a clinical role and a contract with your LCSW supervisor. Mm -hmm. Okay, can clinical hours expire? Yeah, Kelly, that's a good question too. So um, your clinical hours do expire eventually. Um, you do need to, um, submit them in within five years. So we talked about, Titus mentioned, it's a two-year minimum, but five-year maximum. You can get an extension on that, but you need to, to um, communicate with the board in order to allow that. In addition to them being an LCF, they do need to be a registered supervisor. Yes, Caitlin. And we'll talk about the training requirements that will change for LCSW supervision, for sure. Yes. Okay, anything else, questions about what the practice of social work is? So that hopefully everyone knows here that, you know, when you're looking to do clinical supervision that you are 
that qualifying experience is all in the practice of social work. Okay. Um, so here's where we get to the changes to answer um, the question about how will the hours changed. So there was a lot of debate, um, a survey with over 3,000 responses went out across the state of Kentucky of current CSWs and LCSWs, ranging from increasing the hours from 200 to more to people who wanted the hours to go all the way down to 50, which is the very least any um, state has. And the average between states um, is currently in the 120s. Um, a lot of states have around 99, 100, 110, 20. Um, I think that our state has finally agreed on a compromise of 150. There were a lot of folks who wanted to keep it at that 200 because like I mentioned at the top of the hour, we um, kind of set the standard for clinical supervision initially. And so there's a long history um, with having a high standard. And for some people, the question is, does that high standard go along with having more hours? Our hope is that with this compromise, while we increase the hours, we're also, or decrease the hours, sorry, we're going to increase the quality of clinical supervision that is offered and received. Um, and that change may hopefully in part come from the training that's been added. So what happened? I'm not sure that person is talking to me. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead. Yeah. Um, so supervisors currently do a three hour training. Um, so when somebody asks earlier about LCSW supervisors, we mentioned that um, you do have to be registered and you do have to complete the training for supervision. You do also have to be an LCSW for at least three years before you can be a supervisor. So it's not something that happens automatically. Um, but we're changing that now to six hours of training, which will include best practices in supervision, as well as the legal and ethical um, requirements, which was the basis of the past training. And then there will be a refresher course and subsequent renewal periods. There has also been a lot of talk, and I'm most excited about the opportunity for clinical supervision consultation groups. So um, I know a lot of you all out there are students. I hope there's also some supervisors in the crowd where you're thinking about how do I be a better supervisor? And also, how do I be a better supervisee in seeking out good quality clinical supervision? My hope is that this training and the proposed consultation groups help people um, have the availability of more quality supervision in our state. Um, we are also adding a one-time, one-hour overview, which the board will be sponsoring. They don't usually sponsor training, so this is an, a, a big new thing. Um, the board will provide this one-hour overview to ensure that supervisees know their knowledge, their rights, and responsibilities in this role. So that will be required before you start your contract. Um, so we do also... Um, want to point out that it, all, while all those 150 hours could be individual supervision, 50 of them could also be group, which is a unique and very valuable experience. We'll talk a little bit more about why to do group later in the presentation, but um, we highly recommend it. The two-year minimum has not changed. That's an ASWB requirement, so a national requirement. and. Um, the qualifying experience requirements have not changed. However, telehealth is included now in qualifying experience. So, couple more questions about this slide. Will current LCSW supervisors need to complete the six hour training? Yes, yes, they, they will. If the current legislation passes, which will be proposed in March, the LCSW supervisors will need to complete the initial six hour training, even though you are currently um, 
we will not be grandfathering people in as far as I understand. Um, <clears throat> Amy says you teach the current course and there's so many new ones, great. Um, so yes, reaching out to your trainer. So KSCSW is hoping, Amy, and I hope we'll connect with you to be able to um, coordinate consultation groups. So we want to impress upon people how much we can learn from each other and that there is um, an opportunity to do that by connecting with other LCSWs, sharing our breadth of experience in that area. Jay, thank you for adding. You'll keep me honest here. I appreciate that. Um, that LCSWs will need to obtain the training. So that was my assumption, and I'm glad you clarified. What does it mean 150 weekly individual is at least 100? Okay, so 150 hours means that you meet weekly. So for two years, at least. The idea being that there's 52 weeks in a year, but we all know that people get sick or go on vacation or have a week off here and there. So, or have an appointment or miss supervision. So during that 150 year um, hours it, over two years, you will meet approximately weekly. Um, like I said, only a hundred of those hours need to be individual face-to-face -face with your supervisor. In the proposed regs, they tell you um, how many of those can be telehealth and how many of those will be face-to-face. -face. Um, but it, it does need to be one or the other. And I think most of them are gonna be allowed to be telehealth. And Jay can correct me if I'm wrong about that too. So um, hopefully that answers the question about that. Um, the idea is that you meet weekly. The groups can supplement that. So that additional 50 hours can be group or individual. Let's see. Um, thanks, Amy. Uh, let's see. Okay, Dora said, thank you. Good, hopefully that means it's clear. Titus, I'll turn that over to you. I know Titus has also been a participant in a lot of the Board of Social Work conversations, as many of us in the clinical society have. Um, any thoughts or anything you wanted to add about the changes, Titus, as you're thinking about getting your CSW in the next year and starting out this process? Oh, uh, yeah, I've been attending um, several of the Kentucky Board of Social Work meetings. Um, and they've been really helpful learning about the new rules and regulations that are coming about. Um, and then also learning as a social worker, hearing certain cases and learning what not to do as a social worker and um, basically being able to establish boundaries. That's a big thing, uh, especially uh, with your clients where you might have a dual relationship or whatever. So definitely attending the board meetings have been helpful. And I'm glad the supervision hours are decreasing that as a person who's looking to become a LCSW in the future, that is very helpful. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've, I've learned a lot by attending the board meetings and just keeping up with the new changes for social workers. Awesome. Okay, a couple other comments in the chat. How do CSWs find supervision jobs to obtain LCSW? You mean supervisors, I guess, or maybe jobs? Uh, how do new CSWs find jobs that are looking to hire supervisees to obtain the LCSW? This may be a basic question I'm still learning. That's okay, Blake, we're here to learn, that's awesome. So yeah, when you're looking for jobs, those are questions you would ask in your interview is to find out more about what supervision is available. Does it qualify for your LCSW's clinical supervision? Um, there are lots of places to look for jobs. The NASW and the CSWA both have website and boards, um, as well as other traditional places where you would look for jobs. Um, but it is important to know as a supervisee, what are your responsibilities? What does that contract need to include so that you can advocate for yourself and make sure to obtain quality clinical supervision? Absolutely. 
Yeah, so Caitlin asked about logs. Caitlin, I'm gonna put your question on hold because that is coming. We will talk about it. Um, okay, awesome. We're gonna talk next about uh, responsibilities. So I'll talk about the supervisor one and then I'm gonna let Titus talk about the supervisee one. Um, okay, so the biggest thing as a supervisee, as I'm sure those of you who are out there know, is that this person is practicing on our license. That's a big deal. It's your license, it's your liability. It's a really, I can't stress how big of a responsibility that kind of is when you think about your professional life. So you monitor and support their practice as if it was your own is kind of the way I think about it. It's like everything they do is on my license. So I want to make sure that I know what they're doing, that they're practicing in an ethical and best uh, practice that they can possibly do. Um, and, and so in doing that, it's my responsibility as a supervisor to be prepared, to make sure that I come into every supervision, having read their notes, having thought about where they're coming from and having um, a strategy in, to help them advance their learning and their progress. So some ways to do that we'll be talking about in the supervisor training. At, and I hope that supervisors will seek out, like I mentioned, there's consultation groups, there's even certification programs. Um, there's a lot of ways to get more information about how to best do supervision. And it really is on us to be prepared and to learn those best practices in supervision to be the best possible uh, providers of that. I know that one of the biggest complaints that came out of the survey that the board did, and I know that Jay has shared this before, so I'll put it out in this group too, is that it has been very unfortunate that oftentimes in our in Kentucky, people have not gotten good quality supervision and don't feel prepared. We really want to change that. The Clinical Society has a mission to change that, to make sure that we have prepared and supported uh, clinical supervisors all over our state. And telehealth and virtual platforms are is a way that we can help support uh, those who maybe couldn't come to some of our programs because of the travel and issues before. So we're excited about that opportunity. Um, other responsibilities of a supervisor is to give feedback, to give clear, direct, honest, and thoughtful, um, but also, you know, feedback to the supervisee that it, it can be constructive, hopefully. Um, we don't want to to hold back that because that only interrupts somebody's growth and development as a professional. So feedback about their practice, what's going well, what they can improve on and everything in between is a responsibility of the supervisor. Um, assessment of their learning and their strengths and challenges. So just like with a client, you wanna match to the supervisee's strengths. What do they do well? How can you help them with their learning style? But where are the gaps? Where are the things they haven't been exposed to or learned about or their particular challenges? Um, the contract is a, is a responsibility of both of us. So we have to both look at it, review it, make sure we really agree and that all the details of our partnership are laid out there. I put the trainings down that we talked about on the last slide that will be new, um, but it, I just wanna say it is your responsibility to get additional training as needed. So if supervision isn't something that you learned a lot about in grad school, which it sometimes is not, um, additional certification trainings are available. Um, scheduling time, you know, committing your time to this process. There is oftentimes an exchange, just like a relationship um, that you would have in therapy, this time being set aside just for your supervisee. Um, is really important and you guys agreeing on that. And then the continuation training and licensure renewal um, is important for the supervisor. All right, I'm gonna turn it over to Titus for your supervisee part. Okay, as the supervisee, you wanna make sure you have accurate documentation and communication. Um, you wanna make sure that when you're documenting stuff, it's um, 
concise and it's accurate. Uh, you want to be prepared as the supervisee. Um, Preparation is important. Um, feedback about this about supervision. So it's important that when you're um, going through supervision that you and your supervisor communicate um, pretty often and you give them feedback if you're not getting anything out of if you're not getting what you want to get out of supervision you should definitely let your supervisor know that if you are struggling in anything it's important to communicate with your supervisor about stuff like that um, implementation of learning objectives and goals so you want to make sure the objectives and goals you have are actually um, are benefiting you and helping you with your whole clinical experience. Uh, so you'll be prepared once you finally um, end up getting your L. Uh, the contract between you and the supervisor, you want to make sure that the contract is. You want to make sure that you're making the best out of the contract and that the contract doesn't have stuff in there that you are basically not um, not doing or not uh, or doesn't necessarily necessarily know how to do. Uh, you have one hour training or in supervision by the board, additional training as needed. Uh, training is always a big part of social work, as you can imagine. There's new trainings coming out, so you want to keep up a, um, with that type of stuff as the supervisee. Participating on time and communication with scheduling. So uh, with your supervision, you want to make sure that you're always there on time. You want to make sure you all are meeting on days where you'll be available and your supervisor will be available so you can make the best out of supervision. And then LCSW license is current and continuing education requirements are fulfilled. Um, that's kind of self-explanatory, um, but basically continuing your training and education as a supervisee so you can be prepared once you finish. Yeah. Awesome. Good job, Titus. Thank you. Um, yes. So a couple of clarifications in the chat. So the hours that you log for clinical supervision are the face-to-face -face hours with your clinical supervisor, the time you spent you spend together. And then the client hours that you um, are doing, those will be logged however your job description and your agency um, requires you to do that. So um, the, min the minimum requirements though are under that slide we go back to. So 30 hours a week um, for full-time or 20 for part-time, that's including documentation and preparation but those client hours. So hopefully that answers the question. Um, I also do have some resources for how to find out um, what the hour requirements are in other states. Um, in the proposed reg, Jay just added the supervisees will perform evaluations. Yes, um, and, and supervisors will assess their supervisees, I think is what he means to say. So yeah, there will be an additional, thank you, Jay, I should have added that to this slide probably. Um, evaluations will also be required, so, and assessments. Um, awesome, okay. Yes, you have to keep track of your CEUs and when you go to the website, you have to log them in. Um, you have to keep track of the date when you did it and um, the provider and um, that is your responsibility as a supervisee and a supervisor, for sure. Okay. Um, so Titus and I put together a slide of our recommendations. So these were some things as we were discussing our mutual roles, um, what that we thought we would share with you all as a group that might help you uh, prepared, be prepared. So no matter what your role, we want you to get informed. Hopefully today is a way of getting informed, but it, hopefully it's just a jumping off point where you will be able to uh, search and find more information for yourself and get more training. 
Um, you are responsible for your own professional development. So not to pick on that last chat person, but that's a really good question. Like, you know, thinking about in terms of after your education, there is a real shift from people kind of giving you that um, material in school to taking responsibility for seeking that out yourself. That shift that happens when you graduate for, and become a professional is sometimes takes a little bit getting used to. Yeah, I have to track all those things. They're not going to give me a um, transcript at the end. <laughs> You'll have to hold on to those certificates, keep track of them in a file, whether that's digital or on paper. Yeah. And that's just one way you're professional, uh, responsible for your own professional development. The other thing we thought about and talked about is seeking out and getting training in evidence-based practices, whether that's around clinical supervision or clinical practice, assessment, all of those areas. The field is constantly changing. changing. We are learning new things about um, how our brains work all the time. So it is your responsibility to stay up to date and learn best practices. Um, Titus alluded to this earlier, but I think that um, it's an important point worth repeating is make sure you're getting the best out of your clinical supervision. Um, we as supervisors are not mind readers. We are oftentimes not going to know if there's a gap in your knowledge that we haven't talked about. So seek out answers to questions. Um, there's lots of resources. Your supervisor might be able to send you to a training or recommend a book or invite you to participate in a consultation where you could get more information. So the other thing we wanted to emphasize is that we are so glad that these proposed changes still include group supervision. That consultation with colleagues who are in other settings is invaluable. You have an opportunity to learn like seven times or six times, however many people are in your group, just than what your experience is. It's like, oh, I just you know, quadrupled my learning by being exposed to these other people and hearing their cases and discussing them and learning new interventions. So um, we have some outstanding group supervisors in Kentucky, and I highly recommend that you balance your group and individual supervision hours so that you don't miss out on that opportunity. Um, someone asked earlier about a log. You absolutely need to keep a log. There is not currently a form for it. I use an Excel file myself. When we were preparing for this talk, Titus, I showed him my literal like just Excel log, like because I'm still counting consultation hours for my EMDR certification. This is a lifelong process, folks. <laughs> so keep your log, put the date, the time, how long you spent, and have your supervisor sign after every meeting. That way, you're not ever trying to hunt people down to document your hours, which is something that I know has been a real time suck for people at times, especially depending on what happens with their job. So I highly recommend keeping a signature log. Plan for additional specialty training. So when you um, finish your degree, you will have a basic foundation and then depending on where you see yourself and what work you'll need to do, you'll need additional specialty training in order to um, practice uh, with um, effectiveness in this field. Um, so like kind of wrap your mind around it. That was one of the things when Titus and I were talking is like, oh, okay, this is not an end point. This lifelong learning thing is for real. You you're constantly adding. I'm always got a book list on my nightstand of some awesome things that I've learned from other people. I'm always signed up for training, moving my education forward. I encourage all of you, both supervisees and supervisors, to do that. Um, make sure you understand your roles and responsibilities. So supervisor can mean something different in lots of different contexts. You will probably have an administrative supervisor in your a position where your job is that may or may not be the same thing as a clinical supervisor. Hopefully you also have a supportive supervisor, someone who's there kind of guiding you and teaching you. Maybe you also have a mentor or a consultant. Like we mentioned, that supervisor has to be an LCSW, but maybe you also work with some great marriage and family therapists who 
can do some consultation and help you out with your learning, they can be great mentors and consultants um, while not your supervisor of record. There are differences in other states. You can only practice or supervise in a state where you are licensed. I know the CSWA, that's the Clinical Social Work Association, that's their national organization that KSCSW belongs to, is currently advocating on a national level to look at what are those possibilities for reciprocity now that telehealth is here. But even with telehealth, I have patients ask me this all the time. Well, I'm moving to Massachusetts, but please, I still want to meet with you. I can't. Um, and so that's really important kind of practicing within the scope of your license to remember that. I also want to highly recommend that you be prepared for your exams. You know, Titus and I also, also talks about what happens if you don't pass. Well, you ha have to take it again and it costs money and you probably don't wanna do that. But the ASWB does have some great resources, some practice tests you can do, organize in study groups um, and, and be ready for it. Um, and I think that your graduate education will then have prepared you um, for that experience. So Titus, any comments on our recommendations while I look at the chat for the questions? Uh, really the only recommendation I have is if, once you start preparing for your exams, if you do come across um, something difficult that you're having a hard time figuring out the answer to, make sure you go to your supervisor and use them as a resource because they can be um, a really good resource for studying and answering questions that you might not understand. And we Absolutely. did we did look up the price of the exam. I think it was like two hundred and sixty dollars. So, yeah. Right. Okay. A couple other questions. So, can you begin working on getting your CEUs prior to getting your CSW? Yes, you can get them, but they won't count. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> um, they start counting once you get your CSW. But I have found, especially now that we're online, but even before that, um, at, at the Clinical Society as a member, you get um, 12 CEUs a year for free, plus um, our workshops and our conference at a discount. NASW has a similar thing, the School Social Work Association. So become a member of an association that will help you with your CE requirements. Also, there are lots of opportunities for getting CEs in the community through the colleges and universities, as well as um, nonprofits and, and other groups. Um, so yeah, that, that's a good question. Um, a clinical social work, with, which is not in a traditional counseling session setup. I'm not quite sure what that means, Kelly. EMDR is my favorite too. But um, yeah, maybe you can type in the chat a little more what you mean by that. Recommend, I don't have any particular study books um, for CSW. It's, it's been a minute. So whatever I used probably then is outdated. But it looks like Amy has a suggestion in the chat. So thank you, Amy. Um, yes. Okay. So um, awesome. Kay also put in our uh, link. So hopefully you can join KSCSW and get that information. Here's some resources and references I wanted to talk about. Um, Okay, Kelly said, it can be helpful to ask in interviews what training and yes, and CEs the employers provide, right? So for example, um, multiple employers often provide their own training and you wanna find out what kind of training they, they offer and um, do they give you time to do that? Um, okay, so here's a great book on clinical social work practice that has a whole chapter on supervision. I mentioned the Clinical Social Work Association is a um, umbrella organization for ours that has links to uh, clinical associations in other states. So for example, if you're moving, that would be a great way to get connected in another state. Um, I put socialworkers.org. They have um, a great uh, references about understanding licenses and licensing across states. 
the Smith um, link is a supervisor certification. So I thought this program looked outstanding. Um, there is so much education that we could do an offer around supervision. I put the Board of Social Work link. Hopefully, um, like I mentioned, you all will attend those meetings. It's been an awesome opportunity. I've been in person, but um, it's so much easier to go online. Um, either is available though, probably once COVID's uh, resolved. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this map for the person who asked about reciprocity between states. Um, but before I do, and you're still looking at this page, the ASWB has great exam preparation materials and questions and answers about all of that LCSW stuff. And then our website is at the bottom too. So let me click on that map and see what questions. Okay, so, um, oh yeah, this part just, so here basically, say I was uh, just about to move to Minnesota, which I have, a, I have a fondness in my heart. The Minnesota Clinical Society for Social Work is just such a cool group of people, um, but, as you see, like their um, requirements are here. So they still have the 200 hours, which we're, we have now, but are going away from if the proposed legislation passes. Um, and then they explain the fees and, and all of that. So um, you can, they have a different level too. So there's a licensed independent clinical social worker, or a licensed independent social worker, which doesn't include the clinical part. And then this is like our LS or our CSW. So hopefully that, um, that clarified that question. I'm gonna look through the chats for a few more questions while we have 10 minutes left. Um, also just pointing out, we do have a list of trainings and I will go ahead and share, um, oops, um, that <clears throat> website. Um, if I can get to it without closing out this meeting. Um, Yes, so here's our website. We have some trainings and events listed, lobby days, first and foremost, that's where we are. But then you'll see we do have um, lots of things going on. We have moved our book club to tonight. We will be talking about an uh, incredible, impactful read that we've been doing. It's The Color of Law by Richard Rothstein. If you wanna join us at 6.30, follow the link on this website. That will be a fascinating conversation. Lella, thank you for clarifying like Eastern State is not traditional counseling, but a clinical setting. That's a good example. Inpatient settings. Residential is another example where I got most of my clinical training. Um, Lakin has also added that you can buy the practice exams from ASWB. I agree. I took practice exams. I think that's a great option. Um, can you take the CS? W exam a little before completing your MSW? I don't think so, um, but I appreciate your eagerness, Kaylin. Uh, thanks, Taylor. Can we get a copy of the PowerPoint? Yes, I will send it to Carrie for her to send out. Um, yes, Titus, thank you for answering that. Awesome. Oh, Jay did say you can take the exam six weeks before your last day of class. Okay. So he is the expert on that. They don't go over those things in school. So I am so glad you guys all showed up today. Um, I'm gonna unshare my screen. And if anybody else, wants to talk out loud or put more questions in the chat. Um, Titus, Kay, and I would be happy to answer them. We have a few more minutes before our lunch break. So um, 
Yeah. Christy asks, what's the earliest you can schedule your CSW exam? Looks like from Jay's comments, six weeks before class ends would be the earliest. Um, okay. Good. Any other questions? Will there be a train the trainers for new LCSW supervision CEUs? If so, how can we sign up? Amy, good question. Um, I don't know of a train the trainers. Uh, I know at KSCSW, we have been working on trying to put together a proposed six hour training that meets these criteria. Um, and then, yeah, we would certainly be happy to partner with you around get, you know, kind of getting consistent training out there. Um, I don't, the board hasn't put anything else out that I know of in terms of getting that uh, training. Um, yes. Um, so Amy, I, my email is at the end of the slide. So I'm gonna share that. Um, Um, I can't see my, there we go. Uh, yeah, so hopefully this was enlightening. That's why I put that. And now you know the path to go. So my email is jennifer.godby at UKY and there's Titus's as well. Um, so yes, please email me, Amy, and anyone else who has any questions or wants to join these efforts. Um, Blake asked, when do the changes take effect? So I think that the proposed legislation will be reviewed in March, um, but that's kind of up to the legislative process. Um, I could see them probably being, I think the last thing I saw on the board's website was June maybe. Um, awesome. Thanks, Amy. I hope lots of you will join. Um, Yes, early March. Okay, Jay, we're on the same page. So LRC hearing is in March and June or July will be the uh, changes. Awesome. So my hope for today, like I said, is that this kind of gives you a path forward is definitely not the end of your training and information about these updates and your clinical supervision journey. Um, whether you're a supervisor or a supervisee, I hope it's just more information to kind of make the path a little bit clearer going forward. Titus, did you have anything else or did anyone else have any other questions? We have four whole minutes. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say uh, if anybody gets a chance, uh, definitely sign up. Uh, for the society, there's a lot of great trainings that they do and CEU opportunities. And then there's also um, a lot of great presenters from all around uh, different social workers and psychologists. So if you get a chance, uh, come on the website and sign up. Awesome. That's yes, awesome. and we do have a student rate. So um, sign up while you're still a student, it's real cheap <laughs> comparatively, right? Okay, Jen, Amy, can we can get with you all about the possibility of doing informational about changes. Yes, thanks, Jay. Um, I will definitely email you about that. Okay. If you graduate in May and take the exam, um, so the First, um, the next step would be to get a job and to identify an, a supervisor who you can get a contract with. So that's probably three steps, but yeah. Great, Dora. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys' gratitude and I'm very grateful for this opportunity. Um, this morning. I love being a part of Lobby Day. This is probably my 
eighth or ninth lobby day. Um, it's obviously a big first doing it all this way. And I miss seeing uh, everyone in the rotunda. But um, I'm glad we still persevered, which is what we do as social workers. We keep going, we support each other, we figure it out. So that's what we did, did today. Hey, J hey, Jen. Yeah. How can people get access to the PowerPoint? So I will send it to Carrie, who um, will be able to um, send it to everyone who's registered or put it on okay. the YouTube or yeah. So she will figure okay. it out. She's got all the connections. Yeah. What is the link back to the main session? Okay, I'll post that in the chat. Um, <clears throat> so yes, I'm glad you're thinking about that. There is an awesome rally at one. So after you take your lunch break, please go back to the um, session, you know, to the main session and um, participate in the rally. And then at two o'clock directly following the rally, I think actually it'll be 145, um, you will see some familiar faces, um, but you will actually get to hear from Kay more about KSCSW and the other social work associations in our state. So that will be an awesome afternoon. And I hope everyone will join us. Yep. Any other questions in our last minute of time? If you're hungry for lunch, I get it. We will let you head. All right. 